This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information computing and communication. It is the first in a set of video clips on computer architecture. It aims to explain the concept of a language called assembler in which algorithms can be written so they can be understood by computers. The algorithm depicted on this slide is expressed in an informal language that is intuitively understandable by people but not directly understandable by computers. It merely adds the first n integers and returns their sum as a result. A person can understand this algorithm at least well enough to be able to execute it, or in other words, to simulate its behavior. We can, for instance, provide the integer 3 as the input to the algorithm for the value n. If we then execute, simulate the algorithm, we see that it starts by comparing n, which is now 3, to 0, and since 3 is greater than 0, the algorithm first assigns the sum of s, which is currently 0, and n, which is currently 3, to the value s itself, which thus becomes 3. And second, it decrements n by one unit from 3 to 2, and it then returns to the test comparing n to 0. This time, n equals 2, which is tr still greater than 0, so the algorithm executes again the same two operations, assigning to s the sum of itself, 3, and n, 2, and decrementing n by one more unit from 2 to 1, before returning again to the initial test. This time, n equals 1, which is still greater than 0, so the algorithm executes once again the same two operations, assigning to s the sum of itself, 5, and n, 1, and decrementing n by one more unit from 1 to 0, before returning once again to the initial test. Since n is now 0, the comparison 0 greater than 0 fails, so that the usual two operations are not executed once more. Instead, the algorithm skips them and directly assigns the value of s, which is now 6, to m, the final result put out by the algorithm. As suggested earlier, a computer is however unable to understand an algorithm in this intuitive but informal language. Computers need algorithms to be expressed in languages more formal and rigid to be able to understand them. So let us try to be concrete and see what a computer would need to understand an algorithm. First of all, it would need to be able to manipulate the content of variables such as s and n. s and n are however meaningless names for a computer. Computers use so-called registers to record the values of variables as they evolve. And these registers are simply numbered R1, R2, R3, R4, etc. So for computers to be able to understand algorithms, we write them so that they use numbered registers instead of freely named variables. For computers, what people perceive as variables are the simply numbered registers. And to be executable on computers, algorithms need to refer to such numbered registers rather than to any freely named variables. This way, the rewritten algorithm now looks as the right side of this slide. This is, however, not sufficient for a computer. It must also be possible to tell a computer that it needs to assign to registers values of other registers or fixed values called constants. This is done by writing such assignment instructions in a very rigid way, such as, for instance, load R3 with 0 or load R2 with the contents of R3. Given this conventional formalism, the original algorithm is rewritten as on the right side of this slide. But again, this is still not sufficient for a computer to be able to understand the whole algorithm. The algorithm also includes arithmetic, or in general, Boolean logic or other operations, that compute results based on the content of variables, registers. Such operations also need to be rewritten in a more rigid formalism similar to the previous load instructions. For instance, add R3, R3, R1 
can be used to mean recording into R3 the sum of itself and R1. Similarly, add R1, comma, R1, comma, minus 1 can be used to mean recording into R1 the sum of itself and minus 1. We could also have written subtract R1, comma, R1, comma, 1 to mean subtracting 1 from R1 and recording the result into R1. With this new conventional formalism, the original algorithm is rewritten once more as on the right side of this slide. So now we know how to instruct a computer to assign or compute values for registers. However, we still do not have a formalism to tell a computer that it needs to react to certain logical tests. On the way to enriching our language to express such condition testing, we first need to rewrite our algorithm in a somewhat contorted way. In effect, our condition testing means that if the condition is not met, the computer should skip straight to the final load instruction. Otherwise, it should execute the two arithmetic additions and then retest the condition as long as it holds. This somewhat contorted, but in fact more explicit, formulation involves two arrows. These express when and where the algorithm requires jumping to a line not immediately following the current one. But again, a computer cannot understand arrows. What is now needed is a way to refer to the lines targeted by such arrows. That way, the algorithm can be rewritten as on the right side of this slide. Each line is numbered and arrows are replaced by line numbers in the algorithm. This is, however, once again, not sufficient, as a computer cannot comprehend as loose and colloquial a command as continue at 2. It needs a formal way to express an instruction to jump to a given line number. This can be expressed, for instance, by a formalism such as jump to. But some such jumps are subject to testing conditions, such as precisely on line number 2. Thus the jump formalism needs to be enriched to allow the computer to understand that it should first test some condition. To this end, the computer needs special jump instructions, such as jump LTE R1, 0, 6, to understand that it should jump to line 6 only if R1 is less than or equal, therefore the LTE 0. With this latest additional formalism, the entire algorithm can be rewritten as on the right side of this slide. The algorithm so expressed is still identical to the original one, but it is now expressed in a rigid formalism that is understandable by a computer. Such a formalism is called an assembler language. Each type of computer has its own assembly language, although all assembly languages are fairly similar in semantic power and elements, if not in their exact syntax. Such assembly languages involve a limited number of registers and instructions, such as load and add. All instructions produce a single result and take as parameters one or two operands that can each be a register or a constant. They are all written in the same rigid format, operation, result, comma, operand one, comma, operand two. Some of these instructions need to specify jumping to a line different from the next one. And some of these jump instructions may be subject to conditions to be tested. Thus a plain jump instruction takes a single parameter, which is the target line number. Conditional jump instructions compare one register to another or to a constant, which may be zero to decide whether to continue at the next line or to jump to the one indicated in the instruction. In summary, an assembly language specifies registers and allows expressing algorithms as sequences of instructions for loading registers, computing results, or jumping to line numbers. Any such assembly language defines a restricted set of such instructions 
that allow doing what is needed for implementing any desired algorithm. 